Hello everybody, in this video I'm just gonna give you a bit of an update while I'm trying to finish my lion drawing. Um, the deadline is in um, about four days, I believe, so I'm gonna try to finish, this, uh, finish it off today or tomorrow. And um, so I'll just uh, work a bit on this uh, while I'll... I'll um, give you an update about um, my work and how everything is um, going. Um, in my uh, last video on my Rimrov's World of Autism page, you could, um, a YouTube channel and Patreon channel, you could, um, I talked about that I was moved to a different project at work and um, and that we would start the training for that. It was training for a whole month. And um, so I'm still doing the training for it. And um, it's been going pretty well. Actually, um, as you might know, we um, do the customer support for video game companies. So um, it's just been learning um, the video game and playing the video game a lot which is of course very fun to play a video game and being paid for it and um, but we also had a lot of uh, other like courses about how to help customers and what kind of issues they might have and to learn um, to work with the, uh, the systems we have and everything like that so but it's uh, been going fine. Uh, met a lot of new, nice people, and so that's so good. And um, they also say that this project is a bit um, less stressful, less intense, and uh, so it might, in general, just be better. Um, now I work from nine to five uh, during the training for f uh, four weeks and after that I can um, get back to my evening shifts. I prefer the evening shifts uh, because when I work the evening shifts I can um, I have to start at 3 I have to leave my place at 2 um, in the afternoon so then I have the morning to make videos and to draw and. Um, so that works better for me than um, working from 9 to 5. Um, but I've also noticed uh, when you work from 9 to 5, uh, it's so extremely crowded with the public transportation and you're waiting in line everywhere to get on the escalators and uh, it's just a lot more chaotic. And um, yeah, I just noticed that it kind of wipes me out already before I even get to work. All that chaos, all those people and um, so um, that's also a good thing about working the evening shifts around 2 o'clock. It's not all that uh, crowded with public transportation. And um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to get back to the evening shifts again. This is a lot better for me. So what I'm doing here, um, I, I finished the, the lion cub and the um, the big lion, and um, what I'm doing now is uh, they're standing on this rock formation. So I'm um, drawing that. I'm not even looking at the photo very much. I'm just making an indication of stone and rock, and um, with like um, a bit of dots, I guess, like this. Um, it's gonna be pretty time consuming I think to, to do this whole part still and I also have to do a, a bit of the background but um, the background is gonna be like really light and, um, so the, the, and the, that's not gonna take me much time anymore um, as you also know I, I have a, a tennis elbow 
Um, I had a lot of pain on it. Um, they, I think they also call it a mouse elbow. And um, I, I had a lot of pain on it, but I started uh, Celebrex uh, about two weeks ago, I think, or three weeks. Um, I'm not taking Celebrex anymore, it's not this painful anymore, but, but I have a lot of stiffness in my hand. My, my, my hand's like really stiff, and so to hold the pencil and to control the movements is, is like quite a quite a task actually and um, yeah it's like you can compare it with um, um, walking outside when it's like really freezing and you walk without gloves and then you, your your hands they get stiff and um, so that's how it feels that you can you can control your hands and your fingers and um, well that's ex that's um, how it feels actually so um, uh, especially with this with the smaller details I'm, I'm, um, it's, it's pretty difficult to uh, to get that done so this uh, all just feels a bit uh, natural honestly. During the training at work, I've also noticed, um, yeah, quite some um, autism-related, um, yeah, issues, difficulties. Uh, the same as what I used to have in school. Um, when we like have a meeting and things are explained to us, then um, processing the information is, is always. Um, uh, very difficult for me when like a teacher or a trainer or is is like uh, talking um, for me to, to, to follow it is um, yeah always pretty difficult and I find, I find it hard to explain but when you're reading something for example you can like decide your own pace you can go back a sentence if you didn't understand it or um, I always um, explain it like this, um, for, for me language uh, is always, it always comes pretty unnatural and um, when I'm, um, if, if you think of a story, it's, a story is actually just a bunch of words and a sentence is a bunch of words and, and for me I have to listen to the whole sentence and at first that sentence doesn't doesn't mean anything to me or or if i if i only hear half of the sentence I, it, it doesn't mean anything to me it's just a bunch of words and then my brain afterwards after hearing the sentence has to put all those words together and and to make something meaningful out of it so, so that i understand what, what is what is said and that process just just takes longer and um of course, by the time I understand the sentence, then the person already said two more sentences. So, so that's why listening to a person talking it takes a lot, of, a lot out of me, and and it, I don't always understand what what a person is saying because of that. And um, so, for me, it always helps when, when somebody is like. Um, telling a story to have something visual uh, along with it like a powerpoint presentation that, that has the words uh, on it as well or the terms that are like more, most, uh, most important and um, yeah that always helps a lot because I'm like a really visual thinker I'm, 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 a, I'm an image thinker and words have always been um, yeah a, a difficult thing for me and um, I also noticed that it took so much out of me that often I even started to doze off uh, and to um, you know, even 
fall asleep and that's not because I was not interested but because it takes just so much out of me to, to follow a person talking I also notice when I do this actually, when I make a combination, uh, when I'm drawing and I um, um, give an update. Uh, many autistic people have difficulties with multitasking. We can only concentrate on one thing at once. And then I notice, you also notice then as soon as I start like talking that I tend, I automatically, I, I, st I, I stop drawing when I, um, When when I do it at the same time, I I I, I can't find my words that easily, and I really start like talking, um, talking more slow, and um, yeah, it, it it takes me a lot longer to um to find the right words and um, that um, express what I want to um say. I remember when I was in um, uh, Lay O'Connor House, it was uh, like a clinic, uh, education center for autistic people especially, and um, once we had this uh, music theater and uh, everybody was like doing something with music, like playing the piano or um, singing or doing the dance or the, the, some kind of a play with music in the background, and um, at one point we had to like sing a song all together and we had to dance at the same time and there was almost nobody who could actually do that and I, I couldn't really do that either like to focus on the singing and to do dancing at the same time it was like it's just that multitask uh, issue that's um, yeah singing and dancing at the same time you're or singing or you're dancing and to focus on both at the same time is just practically impossible. For this drawing I was uh, provided with a photo, but I was only allowed to use it as a reference. I was not like, I, was, I wasn't supposed to draw it exactly as the photo, which was quite a challenge for me. Um, I used a lot of uh, other photos as well for the lion, like the tail was from one other lion. And I did the mane just practically a bit from like memory from other drawings that I uh, made in the past of lions. And um, yeah, the legs I made different uh, than the photo that was provided to me. So, um, but um, yeah, it was a challenge. I mean, I've done it before that I used more than just one photo as a reference. But for this, I um, yeah, I, I did a lot just just not even looking at the photo at all, or not looking at any photo. And um, yeah, it was fun as well actually to try that and see how it comes out. An important thing with drones like this is to know where the light is coming from and to be consistent where the shadow should be and where the lighting should be. I made the 
the light source coming a bit from here a bit um, straight also not too far behind because then of course here it would be a lot darker and then the legs would be a lot darker in that case and um, you see it's all pretty um, it's not like a real um, shadow part so it's, it's more like the lighting comes a bit from here it's a bit lighter over here also with the cup and um, it, it's about the most one of the most important things with making really is realistic drawings is, is to know where your light source is and to know where your shadows have to be and um, the lighter parts um, it's a big part of making what makes a drawing realistic to have that uh, contrast in it So you know I'm self-taught so um, um, I've never really learned uh, or had classes or anything like that so um, and I still keep learning with uh, every new drawing I make. You learn from making mistakes as well, obviously. Maybe even more from doing it uh, correct. It's always good if you, um, um, if you if you're working on a drawing and you don't know what is gonna look good, so just practice on a separate sheet, um, and then uh, see what works best. Because um, I I personally uh, hate to use an eraser in a drawing. I have actually used an eraser in a drawing with this one. Um, uh, you might even be able to see it in my uh, previous uh, in the photos that I've been posting. Um, I had the mouth. The mouth is a lot different in the um, <clears throat> in the older drawings, ah, uh, older fo photos that I uh, posted, um, and it just didn't look good. At least in my opinion, I thought it looked pretty weird because the, the upper jaw was like way too big. So I um, I erased it. I uh, I just took an eraser and I erased the whole mouth. It was pretty difficult because I, it was like really dark already, and it took me many times to like clean the eraser and then go into it again and keep cleaning it because otherwise you get like extremely ugly smudges. And uh, I I drew the mouth a lot higher and I just did it like not even looking at a photo. So it was actually a really huge risk. Um, but um, yeah, it was um, good that I did it because um, it just looks a lot better now. It just wasn't looking correct before. Um, I don't know why it is the the lion in the in the photo that I was looking at had like a, a, the head was in a different angle somehow, but it just didn't fit in my drawing. It looked really weird and unrealistic. So every now and then I do use a drawing, but it's pre uh, an eraser, but it's really rare. Normally I don't erase in a, in a drawing because you damage the paper with it and you make ugly smudges, and it's not something you want to keep on doing. And definitely not on the same spot, since it will just damage your paper. So um, I think I'm gonna end my video here. Uh, I didn't do much, I didn't make a lot of progression, but I hope you enjoyed looking, um, kind of watching this video. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, I have two, I'll um, post the links uh, in the um, description below this video. Um, well, I wish you all uh, a great day, and I hope to see you with my next videos again. Bye!